Hello everybody, uh, welcome. We are very happy that you are uh, here. It's very good to see familiar faces and also new ones. We are still waiting for some people to come, but uh, we are uh, starting because we have uh, a lot to discuss. Um, we chose this topic because IoT is already with us, although it seems that it is something from the future. But if we consider smart metering, fleet management, stock management, and many, many other uses, we realize that it's here with us, and we must know what to do from a legal and business perspective to properly implement it. That's why we invited very experienced speakers uh, from legal, technical, and uh, business side in order to have a full picture of the uh, implications of uh, IoT. Um, Bogdan uh, is moderating the event, so uh, his target is to get as many questions as possible from you <laughs> to, to the speakers and have a dynamic and engaging uh, discussion. I'm just passing the mic to, to Bogdan to tell you a bit about the structure of the event. Um, thank you, Ralka. Welcome also from, uh, from my side. Uh, as usual, I uh, encourage all of you to ask a question on the legal, technical, and practical things that you understand and you don't understand. Uh, because this is why we, we are here to, uh, to come back uh, at the end of the, of the day when we have a lesson to really. really uh, talk about the, the things that we have learned today. Um, as you uh, saw the uh, initial agenda on the website and the current content in some modification, that we changed back again because we are uh, lucky enough uh, uh, Richard Janssen uh, initially was supposed to, uh, to leave uh, during uh, the coffee break uh, but now he decided to spend the time with us because we are very important with us and with the point at the end so we can also uh, open for question. So, um, he will uh, still start with the first presentation about the privacy by uh, design in the IoT project, products and services, and he will also have the last presentation uh, of the day about documenting the cloud services, and then we'll just uh, move up a bit, so the second presentation will be uh, from FD, uh, and then uh, after the coffee break we'll have a uh, that uh, here, we'll, uh, we'll start uh, after the coffee break. So just to be aware of uh, these uh, changes, and um, with, uh, with this information, I think we can, uh, we can start uh, right away. Just a, a short notice, uh, as usual, we are uh, recording the event uh, for private purposes so to get small excerpts that we may use in, uh, um, in uh, promotion or just to put on the, on the website so people know what kind of issues we are talking about. So with this, I'll ask uh, uh, Richard Janssen, from uh, the Cranberries Associate with the Fresh Fields of Dusseldorf to start our first presentation about the privacy uh, Well, thank you very much, and uh, thank you very much for inviting me over. Let me, oh, I, I think it's going to be fine. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. okay. Okay. I'll try to speak up uh, as loud as possible. So let me first introduce myself very briefly. My name is Richard Jensen. I'm from Fresh Fields, uh, working there in the, in the field of, let's say, privacy and technology in Dusseldorf. And, um, well, during the last, let's say, three, three or four years, we have been doing a, a lot of, like, huge projects in, in, in data protection. Yeah? Some, some of them from very scratch, where, where big companies came to us and asked us, hey, could you do us a favor, just, just make us uh, super privacy compliant, yeah? which is, which is uh, easier said than done, obviously. And um, <clears throat> maybe this is one of the reasons why I'm here today. I'm working on, on, on the border and maybe cross border between data privacy and, and, and technology. So we're doing a lot of, lot of uh, big projects, for example, the rollout uh, of, of Siemens Mindsphere, which, which some of you might already know, a very big industry, industry platform where, where companies can, can basically run the applications uh, on, 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 a, on an IoT platform and uh, control the machines and, and maintain the machines from, from any, any place any place in the world. 
and we have uh, rolled out uh, the, the, the MindSphere project in, I think, 73 countries right now, always taking into account uh, all, all the, 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 the local specifics when it comes to law, when it comes to privacy. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to talk today about uh, privacy by design at IoT, and I'm not 100% sure whether this is not <clears throat> a too narrow title for, for the topic, because when we're, when we're talking about uh, introducing and implementing IoT, uh, then uh, certainly, and because I'm working in the field, privacy by design is a very important part of that. But, but um, there, are, there are many, many more um, uh, aspects that we have uh, to pay attention to. For introduction, if you're going to look at, at the overall situation in the world, then we're going to see that the total spend on IoT and technology <coughs> is still on the rise. Yeah? So, so companies that are already heavily invested in, in, in digitalization and technology are still investing even more. Uh, PwC found out that, that the numbers are exceeding $700 billion already. Yeah? And we have some, from UNESCO, we have some, some even more impressive numbers. And um, all countries are like heavily, heavily investing. So, so it's well fair to say that that uh, IoT and digitization is, is one of the main like like uh, parts of industry already now and will be in the future as well. <clears throat> With the um, increased meaning um, of, of IoT uh, in, in, in the investments, the risks obviously are on the rise as well. Yeah, so if I'm about to introduce and implement a new IoT product and want to bring it and spread it to the world, then uh, I have a regulatory framework which is, to say the least, uh, complicated. Yeah. And this is not limited to, to, to data privacy, but as you can see, uh, there are a lot more faults you have to put into. Um, so when you when you are about to, to implement a new business model, you obviously have put some thoughts into into what this business model should look like. Yeah. Then you're gonna you're gonna think about the, the technical setup and even the corporate structure. Let me make an example to make this a bit, bit more bit more hands-on. So if you're about to, to, to collect data, yeah, for whatever, for for a new um, application to, to process health data to overwatch diabetes or something. I'm gonna come back to this example a bit later on. Yeah? Where you're gonna store all this data. And what we see, for example, is companies building own entities, data codes, where they put all the data in, yeah? And where they can ensure that they cross the group and have, have like a comparable standards. Yeah? Sometimes it's easier to control one entity uh, which, which takes care of all the, of, of the data processing and has decent, uh, decent security in place, for example, to make sure this data, this data is kept well and secure. <clears throat> yeah. Then you have to, we, we heard about this in the beginning, you have to think about cooperation partners, for example, yeah? with, with whom I'm going to share my data, whom I'm going to use as a cloud service provider. Yeah. A natural, natural reaction would be, well, let's, let's use AWS, yeah? let's use Amazon, Amazon Web Services uh, to, to store our data. Yeah. But if you have a closer look at that, you, you realize, okay, where are they storing the data? And then you realize they're storing the data, for example, in the United States. For a village. For a <laughs> <laughs> And you think, ah, we have some, some very specific law in Germany from, from, from some tax law, which is really not allowed to, 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 to store data in the United States when it comes to financial data. Yeah? Or you have some, we have some, some other data. Take Russia for Russia for example. Russia has one of one of the I don't want to say weirdest but most surprising and complicated data privacy laws. Yeah, they say if you if you're processing data from from a, from, from from Russian people, this data is going to stay in Russia. Yeah, you're not going to put it somewhere in the United States, obviously. Yeah. So what I want is what I want to say is there is there is a lot of planning um, necessary when you when you develop. Um, a new product and set up a new IoT service, for example. Yeah, and uh, when it's when it's a technical product, and I'm going to come to some examples a bit later on. Um, and you talk with the engineers, for example, we advise a lot of automakers. Yeah, and you come to them and say, hey, <coughs> um, we are we are advising your company in, in, in data privacy law, for example. Yeah, they 
Some of them can say, oh, that's very interesting, but uh, I would prefer to go back to work now, yeah, because I'm doing the real stuff, yeah, because we are building cars, yeah, we are not, we are not, we are not a, 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 data, a data privacy heavy company, yeah. And then, then, then you ask them, hey, what kind of data are you like processing from your cars? And they say, this is amazing, yeah, we're technically able to, to, to send out to our servers 300, 350 different uh, sorts of, of data from the cards. Yeah? And we already have this built-in uh, opportunity to do so. We are we already constantly like, pushing forward all the data from the servers, uh, from, from the cards. Yeah? We just look at the data, speed data, uh, how, how the car reacts, for example. Yeah? And this is it. Uh, and they, I have to say, hey, this is, this is personal data. And they say, why? This is just data about the car. Yeah. So, so, so once, very often you realize that there is there is still still that's a misunderstanding between the people who, who develop uh, the, the, the products, yeah, and 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 and, and the, the lawyers or, or internal internal um, uh, legal legal departments who like have to bring this bring this to life and make this work from a legal perspective. <coughs> Then um, you have to you have to think about how do I want I want to be be, um, be uh, receptive by by the, by the by the customers yeah regarding marketing do I want to be somebody with the image of Facebook yeah where everybody at least nowadays have the feeling suspicious of what kind of data they are collecting right now or you want to you want to have a more tr transparent approach. So a lot of a lot of more, more general thoughts you have to take into account before or while while developing uh, such a, such a product. I think already covered the point, yeah. But there there's there's a lot more than, than just data privacy. Yeah. So for example, if you have if you have competition law, we had some we had some decisions in Germany, uh, for example on Facebook where they said okay, and from a data privacy standpoint, um, the terms and conditions are. Still okay. They're not great. Yeah, they're they're just at the limit. Yeah, but if you take into account competition law, yeah, they, they are abusing their, their their position on the market. Yeah, and because because um, uh, people basically have no alternative to use Facebook. Yeah, and they are so powerful that flips the coin to the other side, and we have we have a, we have an issue from 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 competition law. Yeah. <clears throat> Already talked about data localization. This was uh, the, the Russian example. Then um, employment law. Yeah, if, you, if you're building something in America, I don't know whether you know that they have a like, super sophisticated uh, way of, of tracking people by doing key logging. Yeah, and they're not only doing this to find out whether people are like working or just making another coffee break. Yeah, but they but they have sophisticated algorithms by, 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 in, in, which they use. To, to make an assessment on, on, on the employee's health. Yeah. If, if something is wrong with your heart, you can tell that from the way people are typing. Yeah. That something would, would not would never be, be, be possible in Germany from, from an employment um, from an employment uh, perspective. <clears throat> so we are narrowing it down a bit to, to, to data protection, yeah. If you if you if you're developing a product and, or a service, you have to you have to make make a data privacy, make data strategy uh, to find out um, yeah, what to do with the data, where you get the data from. <coughs> um, we had we had an example where, where a company um, bought, bought bought another entity which was holding a large amount of customer data. And uh, after they bought it, they bought it and used this data to, to, to send out commercials and make marketing, be very successful with that. And uh, after they bought it, they had a look into it and realized, well, we just cannot use the data yeah, because it was not acquired uh, on, on, a, on, a, on a legal basis. Or, as, even as worse, uh, they, they, couldn't, they couldn't, couldn't find out because whether it was acquired legally or not because there was no documentation. So if you want to be on the safe side, you might consider to 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 um, to collect the data yourself. Yeah. <coughs> and when you when you're collecting data from your customers, yeah, you have to put in place uh, terms and conditions. 
that besides besides the the, 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 the question of data protection allows you to use the data yeah? because the, the data is not only protected but data is, is let's say property as well. So I'm not going to go through the, through the whole list and do me a favor and jump in any time you have any questions or you want to discuss something else. My, my slides are just only to, to, to give a rough idea of what we should talk about. I have a question on whether data is really acquired or not. Yeah. So you're having a contact with you and I want to Contract I have with, with, with the company who is providing the data. This is more like more like a possibility to, to, to allocate risks. Yeah. But but uh, the, the, the question whether whether I can legitimately use the data or it depends on the relationship the acquired entity has to the to the to the individual. Yeah. So so also the purpose for which they were initially connected and also the if this is my point of view, and uh, also if uh, you can inform the customer after your first contact with the uh, team first, um, you have the means. If you have the means to contact it, contact him. You can use that. I mean, is the the topic of public sources and the find that was to can inform. Yeah. Uh, so that was the point. Uh, if you do inform the customer, that you have. His data from a public source, you can use it. But the public source should have mentioned it that it is collected for the purpose of selling it to others. Yeah. So if you go to the trade registry and you want to have the entire uh, database, uh, <coughs> because trade registry is not collecting data or put it for public for marketing purposes, they are putting it for, uh, for other purposes. To check if it's real, the company uh, has a representative and we have. So, if you want to contact the extended purpose, I mean, they're not okay. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. So, so, so this is a very data specific Sorry, question. <laughs> and that's perfectly right. Uh, to, 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 to make a long story short, uh, if, 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 uh, if the, the company who has originally obtained the data told the people, we're never going to share your data with somebody else, yeah? You cannot use it. Yeah. And if they said, "Hey, I collect your data. Do you consent me to, to me putting the data to or bringing the data, sharing the data with somebody else?" That's going to be okay. Yeah. But this is something something you have to you have to look at before we ideally before 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 acquiring. Uh, so yeah, I'm to ask you something about the first two things. There. Of course, because it seems a very big difference between theory and practice. Oh, yes. <laughs> Because the first two <laughs> they yes. when you see the approach to data collection, most yeah. of the companies that you talk to and they the backup, they said we collect everything yeah. as much as possible. Yeah. The second one for data selection, we use as much as possible. Absolutely. So how can you go from that, so from one and two, to privacy by design? <laughs> By, by, by teaching teaching companies what is possible and what is not what is not possible. As, as I said in this example with the automaker, they were basically collecting collecting everything. We asked them, hey, why do you do that? And they told us, you never know when you need those data. Yeah, and it, it's, it's 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 better to have them instead of not having them. Yeah, and so they put them all on a server. Right. Yeah. So in the end, they listen to you, or it's just a? Uh, I mean, it's oh, a. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. They, they, I mean, it's, not, it's not because they say, oh, if, if Richard says this is dangerous, you're going to listen to him. It's because Richard says, if you don't listen to us, there's those fines flying around. And then we list, we list the, the, the fine like, like Marriott uh, gets <coughs> and, uh, Google in, 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 uh, in, uh, in France and uh, British Airways, and they say, okay, it's, it's heavy fine. We, we should think about it. And then we try, obviously, we try to make the business work. Yeah, we're, not, we're not just uh, staying there and saying we're prohibited to, to use the data, but we're trying to find ways to, to, to use as much data as possible and to collect as much data as possible. Yeah. But this is, this is a fine line. When, you, when you're discussing the approach data collection, you have to, we have to think about what kind of data we, we, really, we really need. Yeah. And 
and um, I don't know, that's interesting as well, that many, many, many of the bigger clients we have who, who have access to, 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 to a large amount of data, at least, at least theoretically, think about building, building data lakes and data pools, yeah, where, they, where they put all the data together yeah, and have very sophisticated ways to, 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 to tap the data. Yeah? So, so if they, if they, if they, uh, if they like, pull up my name from the system, yeah, there's, there's going to they're going to show up a list. Yeah, they, 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 Richard, you can send commercials, you can call him, uh, you, 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 you can you can want to use his data for statistical purposes. Yeah? this is really like ending up in, in, in overall data strategies where they think about. Yeah? If you if you if you for example think about think about um, the, the big automakers, yeah, uh, with, with all the cars, there are so many interesting business models in there. Yeah, for example, if you, if you, if you think about autonomous driving, all the, all the all the cars have cameras, uh, at least the new cars, yeah, and if you if you are able if you, if you collect all the video material from from those cars, yeah, you just push one button, you have the perfect most detailed map you can ever get, yeah. Probably way better than than, than, than than Google, Google Street View, yeah, because Google has not that many cars compared to whatever only Mercedes BMW or whatever. Yeah. <clears throat> so let me try to, to to come to come to data data privacy and privacy by design. Um, when we talk about about uh, privacy by design, this is not only like like um, Designing a product in a way that we can say data is secure with us, yeah, taking taking three or more firewalls, yeah. But uh, privacy by design basically uh, basically uh, means uh, the whole the whole set of like getting getting a, a product data protection compliant. Um, whether or not a, a product is is privacy privacy compliant. Often turns out when something goes wrong. Yeah, uh, data breaches seem, seem to be seem to be on the rise. At least from my experience, with, with, we've seen a lot of data breaches right now. Yeah, don't know uh, what, what the reason for that is. That people people are not not like having having appropriate security in place, uh, or, or the, the, the hackers are just getting better. Yeah, we we see there there's a lot of probably probably both a bit of both. Uh, we, we see we see um, hacks that are so well made that it is hard to imagine uh, that this is private persons acting here, yeah, because this is done with, with a lot of lot of financial financial um, effort. And um, what happens if you have any you have any uh, a, um, such a privacy breach? It's usually picked up very quickly by by, by the authorities right now. We reported several, several, several incidents. For example, the Information Commissioner's Office in London. Yeah, and we were, we were at the beginning. We were hoping they're totally overworked. It's going to, they're not going to look into it. Or it takes them a couple of, couple of, couple of months or something. And uh, in, in, in fact, we received, we received questions from them within the next three days or something. Yeah. So they, they seem to be prepared very well. <laughs> unfortunately, and. Um, they're going to raise questions. Yeah? They're going to say, uh, "Interesting. Why didn't you have a two-factor authentication system on your health data?" Yeah. And when you when you have to start looking into this, yeah, at, at this point that you developed the product a couple of years ago, uh, then that's that's going to end, not going to end up very well, probably, yeah, because they are they are actually expecting you to to have good answers. The good news of this is, and this is our experience as well, um, they are not asking for for the, the, the total and absolute security. Yeah. So because this is this is just theory and fantasy, it's never going to be absolute security. Yeah. But you have to show them. But we have to show them what what you, what you have done. Yeah. And uh, I'm not going to make it too too like law heavy here, but uh, the uh, the GDPR. Uh, it has, a, has some basic principles, yeah? You have to develop your product that it complies with every aspect of, of, of the GDPR, yeah? And uh, you have to be able at any time to, 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 to um, show that you have developed the product uh, in compliance with GDPR, yeah? Cool, actually. 
And to the authority, if they're asking for that. What do you mean by that? Hmm? I mean, this is just a random question. <laughs> when you who who's monitoring them, what do you think? I mean, I've heard the story now about all the law, and I assume that there's an authority in the middle who is monitoring pretty much the execution of the technical program of the development of an IoT project. Yeah. What do you think? It is not traction? <laughs> well, it, it depends very much on, on, on the perspective you take. I think, I think uh, if, I, if I speak for, for, for Germany, yeah, we are using the, the same authorities we have, we have been using the, the, the whole time. Yeah, we, have, we have dedicated data protection authorities uh, which, are, which, are, which, are working, which are working on the cases. And uh, if you're not satisfied with what the authority is doing, you can still always go to court and challenge a, um, such, a, such, a, um, such a decision. What I personally like is that the files are not going directly into the authority, but because I think this would be, at least in some countries, the, the wrong incentive. Mm -hmm. yeah. Even if the idea is nice to help the authorities to, 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 build, to build people who uh, know, who know a lot about data privacy, to, to, to uh, effectively enforce that. But for Germany, I would say, I would say that the, the, system, the system works pretty, pretty well. What we are seeing currently is that there's a lot of like, like discussions between the regulators. Yeah, they're trying they're trying to find to find the right line. For example, when, when it comes to fines, uh, Germany came up with a more or less sophisticated calculation model. Yeah, to 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 help. resume the fine before implementing something. <laughs> yeah, so so at least we get we have a little bit comparable. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of discretion in there, obviously. Uh, they basically, for example, they say if, if you have had experienced four data breaches before, yeah, the next file is going to be bigger. Yeah, and, and then discussing the various vectors. Um, Even if it's not related to the same, I don't know, uh, vulnerability or. Yeah, it's, it's the American principle of three strikes and you're out, basically. Three strikes. <laughs> 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 but it's just in the public or a private sector? Uh, you mean uh, uh, fines for public? Uh, I mean, this authority just monitoring pretty much activities on the public sector and the private sector. Well, both. 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 Yeah. So, Germany is talking. In some aspects, yeah. It would be good to give a better perspective than yeah. the focus on in other countries. Yeah. But would, would, the, would the German authority question your data security that you employ in a certain kind of situation as a data breach. You gave an example with the two factor authentication. Mm -hmm. And I think that's it's a good well, okay, maybe maybe two factor authentication is already uh, the norm in, in most of the yeah. accesses to, to, to personal data. But um, at least in theory. But when you practice, would would the, the data protection authority in Germany ask you why don't you take this kind of technical measure, not the other one? Yeah. Would they have a standard to pinpoint to? Yeah, they they, 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 they do have they do have they at least you know what the industry standard is. And they would they would be competent enough to say one vector authentication isn't. Yeah. And what what industry standard is it actually? Is it a code of conduct? Is it uh no, it, 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 it basically basically depends on what, what, what the industry is actually is actually doing. But this is only for in a specific industry sector, for example. So two factor authentication is a good example. That's that's basically total total standard. And then they're gonna they're gonna, they're gonna make up their mind on the very specific case. Yeah, uh, I got it on, on, on the slide. Um, the data protection security matters must be must be sort of adequate to the risks. Yeah, and this very much depends depends on what kind of what kind of product you you you're offering or what kind of service. I mentioned I mentioned the, the, the help app where all the, the, the health data is, is, is collected, which is a great thing. Yeah, you can you can like have, have your blood pressure and everything everything in there, and, and uh, this is every everything is stored on the server. You can you can exchange between devices and, and stuff. And we had a, had a case where 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 there was data in, in this regard. Yeah. Luckily luckily only a white hat hacker yeah who randomly randomly realized there is there is there is a a security security leak somewhere and they formed the company and they were able to close it uh, before something happened and this is something where the authority would say uh, we, need, we need more security we need the, the highest the highest standards yeah. 
Okay? But, but I'm a lawyer, not, not, not an IT expert. This is sometimes, sometimes a problem. So what do we do if the client asks us, hey, what kind of, what kind of security measures should, should I implement? Yeah, and I'm usually very honest and say, I have no clue. <laughs> and then we then we then we then we have we have companies we're working with like like technical experts, may it be Deloitte or PwC or, or KPMG or whatever. At least people who, who know who know uh, the, the, this stuff better than, than the lawyers do. Yeah. What we can do, yeah, to give to give them guidance uh, on how the principles work, yeah. The more sensitive the data, the more protection you need. Yeah. But assessing what the industry standard is uh, often requires requires uh, other other capabilities than, than what we can offer. And this is probably uh, one of one of one of the biggest problems in, in, in this regard when it comes to IoT, because it's, it's more than natural that, that an authority, yeah, if there is a breach, yeah, says okay, if there is a breach, yeah, security was insufficient. That's that's probably probably. Yeah, and then they, you have to you have to like convince them that, that even though something happened, yeah, the, the, the measures you took were, were adequately reflecting the risk. And uh, I mean, there are industry there are industry standards uh, when it comes to banking, for example. Yeah, they have some 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 guidelines. There there are there are whatever some some special security laws uh, that, that are flying around. Maybe setting or even even. Rising the standards uh, when, when it comes to comes to sector specific uh, processing processing. Yeah. Maybe by incorporating if you have a rule. Sorry. And maybe you can also have uh, as a company by incorporating rules, so you can count on them because they were agreed as a standard in the industry. <coughs> yeah, by incorporating rules, have another purpose as well. They, they, they should they should allow for the for the for the for oh, the exchange. The certification, I know that yeah, the certification. That's right. Uh, you could you have, have them have them like assessed by the by the authority. We have seen that very rarely in practice right now. I don't know whether you have you have come across some of some of uh, some of certificates being being uh, issued by the authorities yeah, on that. There are on um, security and also security in private. I know that it's one called ESO. So they shut the new one. Freezing cold on the street, 
Yeah, and going to report, we're going to report back, and you could have a live, live uh, uh, weather map of, of, of Germany, Europe, or wherever you want. And uh, they totally developed this product. They were ready to go. They would have just had to, to, to push a button, and uh, then suddenly, from the legal department, came across came across this this new project and said, just 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 be along for a minute. But this you're processing personal data here. And they said, no, that's not personal data. It's just temperature data. We say okay, and, and, and what else? Yeah, location data. And we are we are we are to, to allocate the, the, the information to to a car. We are processing the vehicle identification of it. Yeah. And to explain to them what world is that not personal data? That was kind of a heavy heavy task actually. Um, and then they had to redesign the whole product yeah, because they hadn't like like um, um, planned for for a for a consent management in that. Everybody who has to do a little bit to do with, with data privacy, the authorities are very, very, very um, um, <clears throat> reluctant to allow the processing of, of location data, yeah, because from, from tracking somebody, yeah, you can basically tell, tell the story of his life. You can see where does he start in the morning, yeah, where he doesn't live. Is this a good neighborhood? Is it a bad neighborhood? Yeah? If he's going to the other place five times a week, he's most likely working there. Yeah? And if he's doing he's doing eight hour shifts, yeah, he's probably not management. So he's, he might be on the, on the poorer side of, of, the, of the company. Yeah. And there's so many, so many, so many facts more uh, that you could could, could uh, tell, tell from location data. So uh, this this led to, to, to heavy extra costs uh, for, for, for the project yeah, because developing a, a working um, concept management you have to build in the car. Yeah. It's now now we are we are crossing. Crossing, let's say, the, the, uh, the more theoretical part of the law. <clears throat> I can have a question here. Okay. Um, how did you get the consent, and, and uh, at what point in time um, was the consent changed to the Well, that's, that's pretty easy. You have, you have like the human interface uh, in, in cars, yeah? And you can just, if you, if you have to wait the service, yeah? You can say I'm going to click on weather app in a car. Yeah, it's, it's going to kind of pop up uh, a, a consent declaration. Yeah, if you activate the service, yeah, you're going to process your personal data. And this personal data is going to be your location data. Uh, if you're fine with this, you click click yes. Yeah. And, and you, I think you mentioned on the previous slide uh, that privacy by design can be a product. It should be a product feature, actually. Uh, yeah. Now the other one. Now here, yeah. data protection for blend as a product feature. Yeah. Like in concrete terms, so can you give an example? How is that? Can... It, 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 let's take a, let's take an application for mm -hmm. example as a, as a product. Yeah, and you 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 you. Um, Having, having all the features you want to have, you, you ask a software company to develop that for you. Yeah, data privacy would, would, one, would be one of the features. For example, the consent management. Yeah, you, you would tell them the, the 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 app must allow all the update of privacy notices. Yeah, which is for example in cars a real problem because yeah, you, some some of some of the cars have like they have some sort of information in the car. Yeah. Mostly you don't use the car, you don't even like use it electronically, but they don't have the have like the opportunity to update uh, privacy notice. Yeah. And if you're offering a new service, you have a need to, to update information or to obtain new consent or to re-obtain consent. Yeah. And uh, this is just something if you if you, if you have, have a software company develop a product for you, you will put on the list uh, of whatever privacy privacy item is, is, is uh, required. Analysis. <coughs> yeah, this was the example, the example here. So, so they, they had to they had to afterwards build in a, a, a consent management. Yeah. And um, the um, the thing is that, that as, as privacy privacy requirements change during during the life cycle of the product, yeah. we have the opportunity to, to, to keep up the, the data protection standards and comply with data protection. And all the other regulatory requirements during during the whole the whole life cycle. For example, if, if you if you have a firewall on, on your on your on your your car that prevents.
prevents hackers from taking over control over the car. Yeah. And, and uh, then, then three years after production, they find that some hacker manages to like to like uh, keep you in the surface in a roundabout. Yeah. Nothing, nothing bad happens, but you, you uh, all of a sudden feel the need to update the firewall or whatever security measures in the car. Yeah. You, you have to be able to do so 